Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, this is the Q&A episode. Questions and answers, questions from you from Facebook. We're going to go over it. We're going to do a second part eventually on this also because we had a ton and ton of questions. But that's what we're doing, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hopefully, if it's your first time here, you'll have a look around. Hopefully, it won't suck. Hopefully, you'll get something out of it. But this is the question and answer one. So we're going to take questions that were asked by people like you, and we're going to answer them today. So it'll be an interesting episode nonetheless. Uh, if you haven't caught up, we are everywhere. YouTube, we're on SoundCloud, Podbean, and Spotify. We're everywhere. If you haven't, catch up 220 plus episodes. That's a lot of episodes. All 30 minutes long. It's been going on for like four years, every single Friday. That's nuts, right? But either way, uh, I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource, so be prepared for a shameless plug. Uh, if you want to buy supplies and you need to buy supplies, you got to get them through me because that would be absolutely epic. If you want to be one of the epic people, one of the cool kids, as you notice the stickers, see the cool kids stickers? You get a cool kid sticker. Just mention a sticker and I'll throw one in for you. Limited edition and only if you buy from me. My number is 862-312-2026. Yes, that is how I make my cheddar. So it is a huge, huge thank you to everybody who lets me put orders in from them. Uh, by the way, it doesn't cost you anything extra. Uh, it's just super easy for you to put everything in your cart and then shoot me a text and be like, Yo, Jersey, it's in my cart, man. Go buy yourself some name brand beard cream or whatever because everybody tells me what i can buy with all the 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 millions of pesos i get from uh commissions but my number again 862-312-2026 that's my cell so call me text me whatever let me put your orders in shameless plug and if you are as awesome as i think you are which i'm pretty sure you're pretty awesome and you want to do me a huge solid american window cleaner magazine if you haven't gotten it yet do it this is absolutely the most amazing window cleaning magazine that ever existed for window cleaners. Plus, you get all the awesome stickers. Every single month, mailed to your door. Go to awcmag.com. Do it now. If you're listening, just take a second. Pull up Safari. Pull up whatever. Go to awcmag.com and get a subscription. All right. We're done with all that. Shameless plugs are over, but yeah, that's how I make my cheddar, so do all that awesome stuff. So, like I said, we're going to actually take some questions from you guys and gals out there, uh, and I think we're going to be doing a second one of these because it did go over so stinking well, but here we go. Questions and answers. I'm going to mention you. If you do give me a question, you want to give me a question, you want to shoot a question, go ahead and comment on Facebook. Go into Pro Window Cleaning. The question's up there. You can post it there. Or you can shoot me a text and be like, question for your Q&A. And then ask your question. And I will give you a shout out either way. But the first question for this Q&A is from Mr. Austin Grubbs. Which if you don't know Austin, he's a super cool dude who owns Pit Vipers. Who actually broke his Pit Viper glasses. And he's just balling. He went out and bought another bear. Because he's that awesome. And he's got an awesome podcast, so check that out. But he asked, basically, do you find quarterly the best way to do taxes? Now, there's a few things in the tax world that we're going to talk about. First off, if you're talking about sales tax, that's different. Every state's a little bit different on sales tax because it really comes down to city and counties and all that fun stuff for sales tax. Uh, luckily, in the states that I've been in at the time, uh, did not require tax to be paid, except... In North Carolina, you had to pay, and I don't know, I haven't checked this in uh, quite a few years, but uh, you actually had to pay taxes, like collect sales tax, if it was a reoccurring commercial job. So if you're talking sales tax, paying sales tax, uh, that's different. Check with your, uh, you know, kind of whatevers. But if you're talking about actually paying your estimated, I think, maybe, uh, estimated, uh, yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. Um if you do pay your quarterly taxes, quarterly estimated, your burden will not hurt so bad, right? The other nice thing about every quarter, there's something good going on, right? So you have your pre-spring, your, your, your summer, your fall, your middle of winter, coming out of fall. 
you have really some good times where you're cash rich. Um, if you are, are not saving for taxes, take minimally 10%. Again, check what, what you're doing, really break it down, but say you got 10%. It should be closer to when you're paying taxes really like 30%, but depending on how, what you can do in your taxes, save at least 10 to 20%. Set it in a tax account. Every time you make a deposit, I'm depositing $2,320. Take 10% of that, $232, throw it in the tax account. That way, when you go to pay your taxes, you always just have it. You're never even looking at it. It's just there. Uh, that helped me immensely in the beginning, immensely. Another thing on taxes that you really should um, check out is filing your taxes as an S-Corp. Now, uh, again, I'm a dummy uh, that sits in front of a cardboard backdrop or whatever this is. Uh, but when I switched over to an S-Corp, uh, it was huge for my business. Uh, I saved in the first year. Actually, let me rephrase that. When my accountant, when I switched accounts, he looked at me and goes, why are you not filing like this? I said, I don't even know what that is. He did the quick numbers. It would have saved me like $8,000 in the first year. I would have not had to pay $8,000. Then you start working in deductions and what you pay, your 401k contributions and things like that. Your tax burden can really feel not so burdeny. It still sucks to pay somebody like the government money for not doing anything on that side of it. And before you want to get all woke on me and tell me, yeah, well, whatever, please come. There's lots of taxes. I don't think the tax rate on a self-employed person needs to be 35%. I think that's ridiculously stupid. But who am I? Who cares what I say? I can say anything I want right now, and no one cares in the government. So either way. But you can lower your tax burden. So if you're talking about quarterly estimated taxes, yes, that's a great idea because it makes that burden breaking down your $10,000 tax payment for the year down into small $2,500 chunks or whatever uh, really does uh, help that burden. So pay quarterly if you can. The other nice thing is even if you're paying quarterly, but yet winter comes and you're like, dude, I just don't have this cheddar. In an estimated, you technically don't have to pay uh, the, don't quote me, but your estimated are just that estimated. So you can then double up on the next estimated or wait on the end. Sometimes people just pay all of it at once. The problem is, is when you go in there and have to write like a $30,000 check, that sucks. That hurts no matter who you are. Just write the $30,000 check for nothing. Like, oh, this is money I'll never have again, right? So yeah. Thanks, Austin Grubbs. Check out uh, his podcast, by the way. Super cool dude. Uh, and the next question is, have you ever doubled an estimate because you didn't want to have the conversation about why the glass will not become clean? This is by Ryan Smart. Ryan Smart, yes, absolutely. Um, if you have something that you don't want to do, remember, as much as the work you do translates into the, um, the stress that you have, if that makes sense. There's some jobs that just don't make sense. I literally pull up the jobs where there's garbage bags taped on the windows. I don't want to do that job. I go in the house and there's like a path of garbage that I can maybe... See. I'm not going to do the house. I was going to say, you know what? I'm sorry. It just isn't for me. But if I want to like give a bid, but yet I don't want it, I'm going to charge myself out of it. Bidding yourself out of a project does totally happen. And sometimes that is for that one. What I would still do in is explain that my expensive job... Also is not going to guarantee the windows are going to come clean because of X, Y, and Z. Sometimes, especially in window cleaning, pressure washing, people think that they, all I have to do is clean it up. It'll look good as new. But they don't realize the damage things have done for the past 10 years of not cleaning them. And that's kind of where you get into that problem. So, yeah, I would, if I were you, I would um, let them know, but also plan accordingly. Uh, definitely. Some jobs just suck. I would rather a thousand times over make a little less money with less stress than more stress make a little bit more money. Just doesn't make sense sometimes. So really, really good question. Uh, the next one is uh, when first starting out, do I buy cheap setup or save up for the best? Now this is from Akiri Window Cleaning and I have to tell you I'm a sales rep, but I've also started a window cleaning company a few times. The big thing is, is that if everybody won the lottery yesterday, it'd be really easy, right? Uh, you could just go out and be like, well, I just want the best. Give me a carbon tread pole and a silencer and a this and a that. 
It just doesn't work that way. Most of the time, it just does not work that simply and that easy, right? So what you need to do is understand what you're budgeting for and stay in that budget or budget for something. And then what I always say is once you go to spend, you tack on another quarter percent, uh, 25% basically, because when you budget, you go, oh, I can get into window cleaning for $100 and you realize that's like two or three decent items. Now, if you start with a squeegee and scrubber from Home Depot or whatever, Libman, you know, shower squeegee, you can make money with that. Totally. You can totally make money with it. You can figure out window cleaning. You can do the work with it. Now, remember, there's a lot, a lot more to business than just doing the work. There's figuring the business out. There's running the business and marketing and getting new business and all the other stuff that comes with that, right? But, but you can still do the work with cheap tools. The big thing is, is do they work as well? Mm, they work close to the same. Like if you're getting lines or streaks or smears, buying new tools isn't really going to help you. Uh, that's not really what it's for. But the feel of them is way different. And then the quality of them is way different. If you buy a homeowner grade squeegee that is designed to you be used maybe twice a year, but you're using eight hours a day every single day, that thing is just not going to last. And we talked about pressure washers in past episodes of people buying cheap pressure washers. Same thing. If you buy a $300 pressure washer and think you're going to be using this thing eight hours a day, it's going to explode after a week. Like they just don't last. They're not made to last that long. That's why it's $300. When you look at something, you go, okay, I can buy a squeegee for five bucks at Lowe's, or I can buy this, you know, fill in the blank squeegee for $50. The $50 squeegee is not just charging you more because they want to. It's a better grade of plastic. It's a better grade of aluminum or aluminium for the fancy folks out there. Uh, it's just better components, better everything. The thing is going to last you years and years and years of really constant use. It's like buying a lawnmower in the lawn care business. If you go out and buy a Murray push mower and you own a lawn care business, it's probably not a great idea because the thing's going to go bad in like a couple months and then you're just going to have to go buy, buy something again. So in your case, you really can get a little nicer equipment, but it doesn't really matter in the scheme of things. If you start just cheap as can be and go, man, I got, I got like 50 bucks, go, go to Lowe's and Home Depot. But if you said, Hey man, I got a few hundred dollars, get a starter kit of real pro tools. And it will really, really help. doesn't make you faster or better, but it just helps the whole all around thing. Now I do have to say, which is kind of not really what you were saying, but if you're talking about water fed or something like that, the poles and systems, not as much system, but really the poles, that is a really, really big no-no in my brain because there's so many poles out there that are really good for a low price that people still go out there and go, well, I can buy one on Amazon for cheaper. And they buy some no-name Chinese something pole and it's absolutely the worst thing they ever did. Now, that means that every, even if the thing lasts for you know two months, you're two months of working harder of having a more sore back or having just in general not having a great experience, right? Why go through all of that when you could simply just buy something a little bit better up front? Now, it's really easy to say if you have money. Not as really easy to say if you don't. So again, it all comes back to budget. There is no wrong thing. If you have $100 to your name, buy $100 worth of window cleaner, window cleaning stuff. If you got $500 to your name, spend $500 on window cleaning. It's all budgeted up to you. There's no wrong way to do it. There's just a better way. It feels better, right? I hope that answers your question. Again, I'm a sales rep, so I try not to make it spammy. Does that make sense? Uh, listen, I'm old, by the way. I'm 40 years old, if you didn't know. And uh, I have learned through my life that there is a time and place for cheap things. And when you're buying stuff, it's usually not a time for cheap things. If I buy tools, they're better tools. If I buy equipment, it's better equipment. If it's computers or tech or whatever, I'm going to buy better stuff almost always because with the price comes just a better product. I don't have to worry about it. And here's the other thing. If I can buy a system that I pay a lot more for, or even just more in general, but I don't ever have downtime, it's reliable, and I can use the thing for years and never worry about it, 
I would rather do that than have downtime every five minutes. I bought a pressure washer one time. It was absolute garbage. And I knew it was garbage, but I needed a backup and blah, blah, blah. Well, then, of course, it did become my full-time one when the other one, and it broke down like every time we went out. Something was breaking on this stupid thing that I bought. And it was a used pro model, but it was like a pain. It was just you looked at it, and you knew it was garbage. I got it for a great deal, which ended up not being a great deal because I had to fix the thing all the time. Anyway, first world problems, right? All right, so uh, this one actually comes from Dom uh, Karenimi. Karenimi? Karen, Karenimi. Dom. This comes from Dom. What's up, man? By the way, this is awesome. Dom says, I'm turning 16 soon. What would the best marketing strategy be for me? I was thinking door knocking, flyering, etc., and have already used Nextdoor and in the future will definitely be using Facebook ads. Just not feasible yet as I can't drive. Also thought some uh, about getting on the local news station. Basically saying, hey, I got not a lot of money, not a lot of resources. What can I do to get out there? It's a great question. By the way, welcome to the industry. 16 years old. Dude's a hustler. Uh, you're going to make it uh, huge, man. Huge. Um, so there's a few things that you can do now in the world of advertising. If you could do it all, you'd do it all, but I'm going to tell you billboards, radio, and even news stuff, not as awesome. You, on the other hand, my friend will be able to get on the news by saying, Hey, I'm a 16 year old. This is what I'm doing. I think it'd be a great story getting that out there. People are more likely to jump on. If I jump on there and say, Hey, I'm some old dude, uh, with pointy hair, I'm, I'm trying to get, they wouldn't do that. Right. So for you, yeah, you could totally do that. Especially when you get on the news, it's free publicity, but you have to be to the point in your business that you're ready to be able to take on some customers. Cause you may get a few from that. But the big thing is you either have time or you have money. Now you have time. Now you're balancing this with your other job, which is your school, right? You don't have a car, so that makes it a little bit more difficult, but you got the time on your on your side. Now, if you can get somebody to go bring you to a neighborhood or you can drive the bus or you can take an Uber or whatever you can do, even take your bike. If you can do that, print up some flyers. They're cheap to do and you can cover a lot of area. EDDM itself, that's every door direct mail, is also extremely cheap. People are more leery of that. They'll go the other route because they somehow think that it's way more expensive. In EDDM, I can ship and uh, print for like 25 cents a piece. I mean, a full color flyer is cheaper than going to a place and have it Xeroxed. Look into it. It makes you look a little bit more professional and what they're scared of in the EDDM world is that you usually spend thousands of dollars. Now, if you send, say, 400 pieces, right? But you send it to those people every single time. Boom, boom, boom. 400 pieces is not a lot at a quarter a piece, right? It's just not a lot. Dollar-wise, it's not a lot, Right? You're talking about $100 to send out 400 pieces. Now, obviously, it's at that time. Look into EDDM. Look into printing. At cost print here at uh, Window Cleaning Resources is a good thing. You can print up flyers for really cheap. You can mail for really cheap in the Every Door Direct Mail, but you have to mail multiple times. So now, all of a sudden, that $100 to 400 people, $100 to 400 people is not bad, right? But you have to send them three times. So now you're talking about $300, right? If you're doing flyers and you get them for cheap, you're going to save all the mailing of that, right? So if you still get the same flyers, but you're not paying the postage, you're going to save about 16 cents a piece, which tends to add up when you're doing a whole neighborhood, a whole mailing route, a whole whatever, right? You have more time than money, so find things that you can do in your time that don't necessarily have to equate to money. Eventually, you're going to have more money than time, right? You're not so busy, but I need to, I'm just going to pay, right? but not until that time. Uh, you'd also mentioned Facebook. Facebook is huge. Facebook is huge. But what I see as a big flaw with a lot of people is not even a lot, but most of the people that I see complaining that they're slow, uh, they can't get up and running, they can't, they're having issues, they just can't get traction. They're, the big thing is, is that they don't understand sales. And you're like, well, sales, I, that doesn't, no, my, my, my website sells my product. My flyer sells No. 
Sales is you closing the deal, right? So it may sound stupid, but you could go and get a simple sales book. That simple sales book is going to talk, tell you all about how to do the sale, how to sell, how people buy, what people think about, all of those things. I read sales book all the time, and I'm not even a salesy person. If you've ever talked to me, I'm literally as low-key as you could be. I'm like, these are your options. Here's your thing. What do you think? I'm not salesy, but sales in general is interesting. Everything. If you want to go date someone, you have to sell yourself. If you want to go close your uh, uh, window cleaning jobs down, you have to sell yourself. If you're on a Facebook market group or you're on a moms of fill in the blank group, right? You have to sell yourself. You have to find what your target, how to sell it, how to say it. The problem people come into is when they do this kind of stuff, they go, well, I really like this. And then they put it out there and they go, oh, nobody liked that. You're not your target market. Of course, nobody else liked it. You liked it. It wasn't made for everybody else. It was made for you, right? So you have to basically uh, do everything you can to be as good of a salesman as you can. That is going to help you. So Facebook, awesome. Uh, actually, uh, everybody that's old, stop listening because you'll probably yell at me. But TikTok, TikTok is the greatest uh, money for ROI that you can get right now. I don't know how to word that. It's the cheapest ROI you can get. TikTok's amazing. You make TikToks? You on TikTok? Do you don't think that there's TikTok business? You're wrong. TikTok business, it's like Instagram business. All these things, you start making accounts like that and get it out there. People like that stuff. They find it, they call you. It's huge. You can be everywhere. You can have a Facebook account, Instagram, TikTok. You can be on Nextdoor. You can be on Craigslist. You can do all those things for absolutely zero dollars absolutely zero dollars now the hustle side of it that's up to you you can put in as much as you want but if you are if you're doing two posts a day on all those media platforms holy cow in a month's time you have hundreds of posts people are watching this stuff they're finding you they're calling you you're the the king absolutely absolutely remember it targets people that like this stuff all that's for free if you got nothing but time you don't need a driver's license to go do tiktoks facebooks instagrams right? Don't do door knocking. I'm going to tell you one thing. Don't do door knocking. It doesn't work real well. People don't want you in their house. They don't want you to be spammy, right? They don't want you to be like, hey, uh, couldn't help but notice some of your shingles are off your roof. You're like, those guys come around every time it rains. Don't do that. But all those other things, man, look at stuff that's free, best bang for your buck, and do that. It is going to uh, uh, really pay some big dividends for you. But congrats in general, man. 16-year-old Dom getting in the market. Oh, the next one says, what are ways to upsell once on site? Something besides gutters or pressure washing, adding something like greenhouses if you see one or skylights, etc. Yes, all of the above is awesome. Now, there's a difference between upselling and bait and switch. And every time I talk upselling, somebody comes on here and goes, I just offer it all. That's what I do. I offer it all. Sweet, bro. Sweet. I'm not telling you any ways wrong, so don't get that. I'm not telling you anything, but this is not a bait switch. You don't tell somebody, oh, man, I clean all your windows for $20. You show up and go, ooh, yeah, well, that actually covered each window, and I have to, that's a bait and switch. You're a piece of garbage if you're doing that. But an upsell is when you show up to a place, they hired you for windows, and you go, hey, just so you know, I also do fill in the blank, fill in the blank, fill in the blank, fill in the blank, fill in the blank. What other services can you offer? You don't want to do pressure washing or gutter cleaning. What else is there? Like you said, skylights. There's screen cleaning. There's rescreening itself, right? There is deep cleaning the tracks or sills. Anything you can think of that's above and beyond the normal scope of work is an upsell. If you let somebody know before and say, hey, I just want to let you know a couple of the other services we offer, just listen. If any of them sound interesting to you, let me know. If not, no worries. But I also do this. I couldn't help but notice this and this and this and this and this. Uh, do this, the price would be this. Absolutely upsells work very, very well. Now, if you don't believe me, you've heard this. You probably, a lot of you are just like, oh, this guy's beating a dead horse, but I love some of the stuff in business. There's a fast food chain, if you've ever heard of it. But if you go there, especially back in the day 
back in the 60s, 70s, that time. 50s, actually, I think it started. But you go there, and you buy, I would like one cheeseburger, please. Great. Would you like fries with that? That's an upsell. That is absolutely an upsell because you went there for a burger, but now you're getting fries too. That is an upsell, and it increased profits immensely. All you have to do is ask. You'd be so surprised at how many people are out there that would be happy with more services that don't know what other services are out there. What other services you do, right? Upselling is huge. Upselling increases the ticket. The biggest downside to upsell is that when you get to a job, especially if you're running tight schedules and somebody adds something, it screws up your scheduling. So figure out your uh, upsell close rate, right? And work it into your your, your schedule. If you close one out of every day, you do one upsell. Well, spread all those jobs out by whatever that upsell normally is. And then that way you're early if you don't do the upsell or you're on time if you do. It's really, really a smart thing to do the upsell. And by the way, James Hoppy Hopkins sent that one in. Uh, thank you, Mr. Three Name. That's pretty awesome. Um, always, always, always be upselling. Every time you can do an upsell, but just have to find what services you are actually going to upsell. Uh, this one is how about surviving and growing a business during the late fall and winter times? Uh, my business is solid, but many newbies may not. Now, by the way, this was by Aaron Klink. Uh, Aaron, that is the quintessential asking for a friend. It sounds, how would they do it? Mine's good, but how about some, no, uh, but, um, the big thing is, and this is all in hindsight. So this isn't going to make sense until next year. The biggest thing is to save. Now, the first few years I was in business, I didn't. I didn't save right. And then tax time came. They took all my money and I was broke as a joke. And I'm like, well, that was stupid. I thought I was really good. Another thing is I know guys who have bought businesses. And then the week they bought the business, they went out and bought a motorcycle. I'm going to be getting all this money. I got to do this. Yeah. So the thing about that is you have to save for all of that because I've had some really, really, really hard winters. Like winters that come in in like November and don't leave until April, May, like hard. What do you do for that many months? We do some snow removal, but it's cold. It's not snowing. You're not making that. Your mother nature's whooping boy if you're doing snow removal. What do you do? Well, you can't advertise because no one's buying. If no one's buying what you're selling, you can't make money. If you can't make money, you don't eat. Now all of a sudden you're panicked and people are out there trying to get second jobs. Save your money, prepare for it. I know it sucks. I know it's not something you can do right now, but that's a big thing. Another thing is if you're already there and you're like, it's too late, look at some winter services. 500 bucks, you buy a snowblower, do as many accounts as you can in like six to eight hours on a two inch snowfall, charge 40 bucks a driveway, boom. It's a great little boost of some income when you need it, but save your money, save it. Next one says, have you ever made a super option filled menu? By the way, I'm paraphrasing. This one's pretty long. Uh, like squeegees and soap types and, and all that, etc. cetera. Uh, that was by uh, Lewis Hay, by the way, a uh, superstar on some forums. He's out there everywhere. So I understand that when you go to Starbucks, there's a billion thing options. The thing is, is that when there's so many options like that, you're blind at some options and people will only choose one of the three things they only ever get, right? But they go there enough to understand that. When you have something like, say, window cleaning tools, for example, we try really, really, really hard not to overwhelm people with too many options because if you can't be certain of your decision, you're not making the decision, right? So if you went to somebody and said, hey, I got 12 different uh, channels that I can clean your windows with. Which one would you want? They're going to go, I don't know. What, which one? I, which whatever? Just pick one. I don't know what's the best one. Why would I? What? Okay, the, that one. Okay, great. Now, what kind of soap did you want? Here's five choices. Well, what's the difference? What do they do? What I want the... People want the best when it comes to the equipment and process and whatever you're doing, right? So as much as you think it'd be fun to kind of do the choosing, it doesn't really work like that. People don't understand it like they would understand like choosing toppings on a pizza. You can have lots of toppings on a pizza and people can go through. No, I don't want green peppers. I don't want sardines. I don't want. They know all that stuff. They still go back to say, I'll have a pepperoni and sausage with onion. 
right? If you give them too many choices, they are unsure of it and they will not buy from you. So no, don't do that if you can. It's not a really good idea. And the last one, which hair gel gives you the best hold? I have to say, uh, this is by K-Rod, uh, by the way. Um, I use a paste, not a hair gel. Uh, but uh, funny enough, uh, every time I do post a video or anything, uh, he does mention hair gel in some uh, aspect. I'm pretty sure that uh, hair gel may not be something that is needed by you if i can remember right so uh i can't really recommend a good one uh but uh a paste um just a nice light paste works pretty well then just don't have your barber cut this little front thing and it keeps falling down and anyway if you're not watching on youtube you're lucky you don't get to see my hair uh it's not that impressive anyway uh but at least i still have some up there uh until further notice um either way but that's this week's episode. It was a fun little Q&A. If you have any questions, definitely send them over. More importantly, if you have supplies, which you need supplies. Everybody needs supplies. Why does everybody need supplies? Because you're cleaning windows, right? So definitely go out and do that. Uh, my number is 862-312-2026. By the way, you looking at this? This is a dope, dope calendar. Steve-O is the man, by the way, one of the coolest people in all the world, if you haven't met Steve-O. I actually get to go on a super dope, if anybody's watching anymore, we have a big sales trip planned for all of our sales team here at WCR. Haven't talked about it yet because nobody else is really invited, just the sales team. But like, no spouses, just us. We all get to hang out and kind of bond and uh, talk shop. It's going to be amazing. Steve-O's going to go, so get to hang out with him. Either way, if you haven't gotten your subscription yet, go to awcmag.com, American Window Cleaner Magazine. Yes, it's a real magazine. It is an awesome magazine. Full color, comes with sticker sheet, custom window cleaning stickers every single month, and it's awesome. It's like the coolest thing you could possibly do, at least for me, on top of uh, putting orders in. Right? So go get a subscription because it means the absolute world to me. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Um, again, my number 862-312-2026. Let me know if anything comes up. And uh, until next week, go out there and be epic. <laughs>